so um so let's take a good look i usually invite us to get our spiritual hats off because most of us i know including me the high righteous spiritual types would go hey if you're impeccable with your word raise your hand it's like oh, okay i'll raise my hand it's like well really So, you know, without shame, without blame, without guilt, just check in with yourself to see on a scale of 10, it's like, you know, I really have, I, I'm, I actually may ascend this afternoon. I'm so spiritual. 10 being high, zero being, mm, you know, gossiping has taken a hold of me lately. I've not been all that mindful about my words. So where are you on this impeccable with your word scale? So just notice it because I hope during this time of your four agreement studies and that in mind, because I'm entering this four agreements again as a boot camp. I'm telling you, and I've been doing this with gratitude. I did it with Crucial Conversations this year in my coursework, my own study. The things that I teach and facilitate are what I need to learn and to apply again. And just like our Unity Principle says, it is just blah, blah, blah until it's applied. So if Unity is going to be in the world, what we're dreaming it to be in the world, it's not going to be because we can quote platitudes and Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. It's going to be because somebody in the world uh, actually applied these and made a difference, and it was a, 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 a apparent and attractive for somebody to say, wait a minute, what are you into? You know, I love and, and appreciate the way you are in the world. I love and appreciate the way you're being. I, I want to know more about what you do and what you think and where you got that and what your teachings are. So our teachings can be alive and stay alive and come alive as we're able to live this out. So the first agreement is to be impeccable with your word, to speak with integrity. And integrity is a, is a hot spot for me. I've been serving um, professionally for 40 years now in organizational management and, and, and human resources and church and ministry consulting. And I hear mostly the word integrity used like this. Cheryl is out of integrity. Greg was out of integrity. John was out of integrity. I don't hear, I'm out of integrity. So I'm out of integrity if I'm telling John and Cheryl and Greg that they're out of integrity. Because I don't know a doggone thing about their integrity. And integrity is a personal thing. So John's integrity belongs to him. Martha's integrity belongs to me. And that's a full-time job. So then... To speak with integrity is to mind my own words, to mind my own business, and to mind my own becoming, to mind my own spiritual evolution, and oh, the allure to mind somebody else's. Oh, the allure to take somebody else's inventory and to point out all the ways they could use a little unity teachings. And it's like, which is out of integrity itself to even put the teaching off onto somebody else. So see what that could do for us today, that if I look at how, what happens when I'm out of integrity with myself, when I self-abandon, when I self-hate or self-recriminate or um, shame or guilt myself, that I'm out of integrity. It's the ultimate of spiritual abandonment, spirit abandonment, soul abandonment, to do this to ourselves. So this impeccable with our word is, is something that's a life work, not a destination, not a tick box exercise, but a direction to go in for our life, for my life. To say only what I mean. Sound easy? So see if you can practice it a little bit this week. And I'm going to. It was a quiet breakfast at this house. <laughs> And boy, I miss the silence to say only what I mean. So then I'll offer a few little practices that I'm, that I'm taking on in my boot camp this week. Maybe you will. That includes waiting five seconds before I respond to anything. Now, it'll seem like an eternity because this part of the mind has already formulated what it needs to say and what they need to hear and what they would be better off if they would listen to my some. 
So boy, it's jacked up, geared up, ready to lay it all out. Like, okay, five seconds, a little pause in here before I proceed in my practice of being impeccable with my word. Avoid using any words or the word to speak against myself. So that means I kind of covered that, that no self-hate, no recriminating, no shaming self. This means I should have done that. I ought to have done that. Why didn't? It's all of that to drop all of that. And then gossiping. And I'm a master at it. Gossiping. And this is my biggest discovery, maybe of my life. But certainly of this week and of this month right now. The difference between gossip and information. What do you think that is? What's the difference between sharing information about something or in gossiping? What would you say is the difference? The difference about providing information about somebody and gossiping about them. And my answer came as compassion. Compassion is the difference. Compassion, what I share and how I share it. So see how you could align with that, that when we're talking about others, it's not always with malice. I talk about people a lot of the time and it's not with malice. It is to pass information. It is to inform. It, it is to uplift. And then there's times where this little sneaky, did you hear? Did you know? Did you hear? Did you, that that still comes in there. So mindful about that and then keeping in place, if I'm going to talk about others, then it's going to be with compassion and it's going to be purposeful and intentional and within my own integrity to do so. One of my other measures is, would I accept it if they were doing to me what I'm doing to them? Would I accept that as okay? And if I can answer that as yes, then it takes the edge off of it for me. And if it's a no, I wouldn't like that, or no, I would likely be offended, then it's like, stop right there. Then that can't be put forward. So be impeccable with our words, my words, your words. Speak with integrity to self. Stay out of other people's integrity business. Say only what I mean. Avoid using the word to speak against myself full-time job, and, in, and stop using the word to speak against others, and that gossiping uh, will not feel right. When we're gossiping, if we're aware of ourselves, it'll feel a little off. If compassion is missing or intent, thank you. The difference between gossip and info is intent. What is your intent with it? And then use the power of the word in the direction of truth and love. Truth and love, which the song beautifully said, and I love that mandolin, and I'm glad you asked what it was, Cheryl, because my heart was a flutter when I heard that mandolin, so thank you for that. It's a family favorite. I've never heard it hardly ever presented in music, particularly the kind of music we have, and it's a, it's a, a country tradition and one of our family favorites, so I sincerely appreciate that today from you earth angels that lifted us up in music. So then, where are we, how are we going to practice this? So, <laughs> it doesn't include coaching people to practice it. <laughs> so, how am I going to practice it? So, if I'm going to put it on my refrigerator, I can't expect the other people in the house to do it. It's just on my refrigerator so I can do it. So think about this. And so this is a few little maybes that we could do. And I mentioned it earlier to take time to actually listen. I honestly believe the world would heal with a few more listeners. Just a few more listeners. To sincerely listen. And the difference of being there, of getting them, 
not colluding with them, not commiserating, but to get them and to, to quell some of this and, and reel in some of this egoic kind of mind that is always eager to spill out my thoughts before others are finished. So to really tune in, which may mean putting our phone down. Oh, oh but all that excitement on the social media. Can I bear not to read it? To turn away from a computer sometimes or to turn off a TV maybe and to actually look at people when they're speaking. So that's one under the heading of listening. And two, which I mentioned earlier, to take that five second pause and actually think about, now I saw a person do this once, maybe it's my friend named Walter. And he, I was so frustrated with him because he was so slow to speak. I'm like, Walter, like, do you have a disease? Like what's, come on, spit it out. Miscompassion here. And he said, well, actually I won't speak it until I've said it to myself first. So I say it silently, and then I speak it out loud. And I'm like, what? He said, it's literal. I speak it to myself. <laughs> so I, re I rehearse, I review before it actually leaves my mouth for me to see, do I actually want to say this? It changed me. So... To pause five seconds or two seconds, two and a half seconds before I spill out all this. And then taking um, <laughs> to, to be able to bear their Martha Creek faces when you're not spitting it out, when they're accustomed to you talking like my mother would say, like my tongue is loose at both ends. She's talking like her tongue is loose at both ends. So then how to be like, okay, I'm going to take a pause and I got to bear them thinking I've got Alzheimer's or something so that, or some disease and then say, well, actually it's, I, I, I don't know what, I don't have a disease that I know of, but I'm really in a boot camp of practicing being mindful with my words. So just see if you can take a deep breath and bear with me here for me to really get mindful about what I'm going to say. And then three, um, Practice demonstrating that you've heard people. So something like, and, and I'm a little cautious about this because I've seen it so kind of loco wacky with people when they first learn a mediation skills or something, they start parroting back everything somebody says. So not parroting back, but demonstrated listening, the difference. Gosh, that must have been a terrible challenge for you. Wow. Wow. What, what, was the, what was the worst part of that for you? Wow. How did you, how did you muster strength in yourself to get through that? So something that stays open, but actually demonstrates I'm with you and that I have heard this. It could be even that's fascinating to me because, and I had another friend, I used to type to her, you're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing. And she asked me to stop saying that to her because I didn't tell her why she was amazing. And it was absolutely meaningless. So if I'm going to say that I find that very interesting because... I found that interesting that you do that because, or that was, that's fascinating to me to hear that you've done that because. So practicing demonstrated listening. And then four, to choose my words, even if it takes a few extra seconds. And I may have to say, I'm going to take a pause before I respond. Or just a minute, I'm really using my words intently, 
during Advent or during the high holidays or for the year end or to condition myself for a new year and a new beginning. So I'm choosing my words a little more specifically. So bear with me just a moment while I think about this. And the five, and boy, this one, all of these have changed my life already. So I know they will again. To practice using words. Um, so let me preface it by saying I spent a lot of time building a large vocabulary. I had some desire for it. I started it as a kid. I challenged myself. Um, during grade school, I would go learn how to spell and use every word in the spelling book all the way through the end of the year and the first week or two. I got, I got partners that would work with me to give me a new word as an adult, to give me a new word that I'd have to learn to speak the word, say the word, spell the word, and put it grammatically together. And I realized somewhere along the way, somewhere close to 30 years old, that it wasn't kind. The vocabulary I was using wasn't always kind with people. So I wanted to speak more simply. So I started dismantling that vocabulary. Now, I'm holding a lot of it, but I don't use it as much. When I hear a family member say, I don't know what that word means. Or what's that big word you're using? So to speak more simply. And educators and um, public speaking training and other trainings tell us to speak at the level of a fifth grader. To reach the broadest audience, to reach more people. So I want to practice speaking simpler words, words that are more comfortable for me and for others especially in conversation. So this is part of my impeccability with words to speak more simply. And it could be that um, it could be if you're, you, if you're swearing too much or profanity or some little word where you get jacked up or a little clever, something that's coming out to take a fast from that word to see, okay, I'm going to drop that word. It's kind of sneaking in a little bit more that I like. So I'm going to, I'm going to reel that in a little bit before it gets any further. And the last one is and I love the word try in that song and that's in direct alignment with this practice, the one that I laid out here. To think about my words as a contract and <laughs> I've criticized some of Unity's documents over the years because our ethics say, I will live in accordance with the Jesus Christ principles. It's like, well, we're not Christed yet. So Christ potential. But in the meantime, we, back here at the ranch, you know, we still got some things to work through, apparently. So um, if I tell someone I'll be there and I don't mean it. It's not true. Then not to say it. To say thank you for asking me to come and I'm going to pass on that. Thank you for including me. And I, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm going to say no to that. So I'm saying yes to you. I'm saying yes to the relationship. And I'm saying no to the invitation. It's a big difference. And we're so scared to death of saying no and of hearing no. And that's a workshop on its own about why that is. So I'll try to be there if that's true. If that's not true, then not to speak it. If I already know I'm not going, not to say I'll be there or I'll try to be there but to simply say, 
something that is true for you, I won't be able to come. It means the world that you would ask me and I won't be able to come. So big, deep breath. So there's your waterfall of being impeccable with our words, my words, your words, and six little practices that we can put forth, perhaps. I thank you for this time. I send you all the blessings of the whole infinity to each and every one of you. Whoever hears this message, you are loved, you are love, you are peace, your power, your strength, your faith, your will, zeal, imagination, your innovative, creative, and absolutely being reborn here, right here today, as we start this new highest of holy seasons. All my best to you. MarthaCreek.com to reach me, by the way, MarthaCreek.com. And I've got programs that go on for all year, and you're welcome to any of them, and they'll all be outlined there. Thank you so much, Martha. You are such a blessing to us at Unity Kitchener, and I have to say you are such a blessing in my life, and Thank I'm you. so grateful. You're very welcome. Yeah, you're very welcome. All of you, welcome. Yeah. <laughs>